Welcome. Welcome one and all in here, out there, all around the world, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And it has been... It has been less than a year since the January 6th violent insurrection up on Capitol Hill. And I think we've all gotten a little too comfortable with the near death of the republic. <laughs> we might pay more attention if democracy died on a peloton. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, and against the expressed wishes of every Republican in Congress, the House Select Committee on January 6th does exist. And right now, their critical investigation... Their critical investigation is focused on former White House chief of staff and man at a bar failing to look smooth while telling a woman to call him... <laughs> Mark Meadows. Meadows, now, he initially agreed to cooperate with the committee, and then, surprise, surprise, he changed his mind. So yesterday, the committee recommended holding Meadows in contempt of Congress. Okay? A boom! A boom! Lock him up! Though I'm not entirely sure how Congress punishes you, whether it's a year in prison or worse, a year of watching C-SPAN. <laughs> Remember their slogan, C-SPAN, it's toilet wine for your eyes. <laughs> Sure, which one is worse? <laughs> After the vote, après the vote, Meadows went on Fox News to complain. This is not about me holding me in contempt. It's not even about making the Capitol safer. We see that by some of the selective leaks that are going on right now. This is about Donald Trump and about actually going after him once again, continuing to go after Donald Trump. No, <laughs> of course. What do you think? What? Mm. Mm. Of course, it seems like they're going after the guy who planned it. Remember what Bonnie said after the Fed shot up her car? Wow, these guys seem really mad at Clyde. <laughs> the big story, big story here, of course, is what else the committee revealed last night. Turns out, during the riot, in the heat of the action, Meadows received urgent text messages from multiple Fox News hosts and the president's son, Don Jr., who wrote, we need an Oval Office address. He has to lead now. Okay, that reveals two things about Don Jr. One, he knew his dad was responsible and failing to lead. And two, he does not have his father's cell phone number. <laughs> You can't give it to him. You can't give it to him. You cannot give Don. But he can't give it to him. You cannot give Don that number. It's too risky. He might give it to Eric. Oh, my goodness. In one text, in one text, uh, Fox host Laura Ingram begged, Mark, the president needs to tell the people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us. He is destroying his legacy. So, the January 6th attack scared Laura Ingram. And keep in mind, her side gig is appearing in your bathroom mirror if you whisper Medicare for all three times. <laughs> and she murders you. Of course, she hooks you and gah! Now, that's true. That's true. That's a fact. You can look it up. Of course, that was her honest reaction off camera on camera, she knew the assignment. She kept up the lies. Earlier today, the Capitol was under siege by people who can only be described as antithetical to the MAGA movement. Now, there were likely not all Trump supporters, and there are some reports that Antifa sympathizers may have been sprinkled throughout the crowd. Oh, sure, that makes sense. They weren't his supporters. That's why, to get them to stop, Laura sent all those panic texts to the man responsible, President Bob Antifa. <laughs> Ingraham wasn't the only Fox fraud freaking out. Meadows also got texts from a bunch of Fox stars, Brian Kilmeade, Sean Hannity. He even got an Instagram post from Judge Janine's box of wine. <laughs> now, keep in mind, these Fox News hosts pushed the big election lie for months leading up to January 6th. And then, when their obedient viewers stormed the Capitol, they acted all surprised. 
Reminds me of Charles Manson's statement after he was arrested. They did what? I was kidding. Helter, sorry. Speaking of, that's how he spoke. People forget that's how he talked. Speaking of the insurrection, uh, we're getting more news about the people who've actually been arrested for it. I'll tell you the latest in tonight's edition of Seditionist Roundup Roundup. The Capitol was stormed by the Moo Klux Klan. Tonight in the Saddy Wagon, we've got rioting realtor and stepmom telling you your dad just went missing, Jenna Ryan. Ryan was famously the insurrectionist who took a private plane to the insurrection. She's scheduled to go to jail in the new year, and now she's reportedly preparing for her 60 days behind bars by learning prison slang <laughs> and speaking with prison consultants, explaining, I may have people that try to run hustles on me, try to trick me. Yeah, yeah, you have to be careful. You might have people trying to run hustles on you. For instance, anyone calling themselves a prison consultant. <laughs> in an interview... I got a little something. I got a little something. In an interview, Ryan claims she's learned a lot about how to act in jail, saying, I now know that the general rules are you don't talk to anybody, but since I'm also a life coach, I can imagine that I'll end up making some pretty genuine connections while I'm there. <laughs> life coach. That makes sense. All the best advice I've ever gotten starts with an inmate from the Dallas Correction Facility wants you to accept a collect call. Shifting to, the, uh, shifting to the pandemic, COVID numbers are unfortunately on the rise, and sadly, some people are still refusing to give the vaccine. Like general hospital actor and above-ground pool salesman who hits on your wife, <laughs> Ingo Rademacher. Last month, this random collection of consonants was fired by ABC <laughs> because he refused to get vaccinated. And last night, the general hospital actor sued over the vaccine mandate. Sorry, buddy, but you have to follow the medical advice. You're on general hospital, <laughs> not general stuff I read on Facebook. <laughs> now, if you're... His name, his name would be good. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Ingo's work, congratulations, you have a day job. <laughs> but... For the last 25 years, Ingo has played the character Jasper Jax Jax. <laughs> the name's so dumb, they jacked it twice. <laughs> and uh, Ingo Jax's argument is that ABC's vaccine mandate violates his religious freedom. Explaining in his legal filing, I am entitled to a religious exemption on the basis of my deeply and sincerely held moral belief that my body is endowed by my creator with natural processes to protect me. Now, a lot of people are saying that Ingo Rademacher is being ridiculous. Unless... That's not Ingo Rademacher! <laughs> it's Ingo Rademacher's twin brother, Vigo Rademacher, <laughs> who just woke up from a... coma! <laughs> After being pushed down a flight of stairs by... The wealthy heiress, Lady Zanzibar. <laughs> who, who is secretly his long-lost sister, Sandra Gilbertson Gilbertson, <laughs> who is also his lover, <laughs> which he doesn't remember because he has amnesia. <laughs> or maybe, or maybe, just maybe, in one final twist, none of that is true. And Ingo Rademacher is, in reality, just a stupid dingus. Oh. Oh, that's, 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 that's the one. That's the one. That's the vibe I was thinking about. COVID is getting better in some places. New Zealand Prime Minister and dear friend of the show, Jacinda Ardern, announced recently that under the country's COVID guidelines, orgies of 25 people are good to go in New Zealand. Mm. Uh. Kiwi! <laughs> the orgy rule came up during an interview where Prime Minister Ardern was discussing how Tinder fits into, into New Zealand's color-coded traffic light COVID warning system. I knew this moment would come, um, <laughs> but I, I can confirm that, that Tinder liaisons have reopened. 
<laughs> Great news for my friend. It's not, it's not strictly embedded in the traffic light system, but um, it is a given up to 25, actually, in a red area. I'm guessing if you have 25 people at your sex party, there's going to be more than a few red areas. <laughs> there are still... There are still restrictions in place, but reportedly, orgy groups everywhere in New Zealand are already rejoicing. <laughs> and I'm being told we have footage of that. Great show for you tonight. My guests are Henry Cavill and Jonathan Groff.